Previously, we learned about things like amplitude, frequency, wavelength, and now we're going to zoom a little bit in on this term called wave intensity. So as you can see behind me, there's this nice speaker. Let's make the speaker make a sound. This is the wave you see spreading out. Now you notice something about that wave. As it goes further out, let's say here, it's not as dark. The black is not as black. The white is, you know, still white. But the wave fades out as it goes further here. Now if we look at the graph, let's see the graph. Hmm. At the source, the amplitude is the biggest. But as it goes further away, you notice that, uh, let's pause this thing. This uh, amplitude gets smaller and smaller. Is there an equation for this? There is an equation for this. But you got to understand one thing. The wave is actually being spread out over a larger area. So whatever energy is created at the source, in this part up here, that is going to be spread out over a much bigger circle on the side. That is called the inverse square law. Now, as we can see here, this nice diagram, thanks to this Bijou's learning app, you can have this source here where sphere area is spreading out like the animation we saw just now. And if we take a slice of that sphere, we'll see these highlighted parts that as the further you go from the sphere, the more spread out this tiny little square is on the sphere. So let's say, for example, uh, if R, that's a spread out of 1, I guess we call it I, if it's 2R, that becomes 4 times this area. If it's 3R distance from the source, that's 9 times the area. That's what we call inverse square, because it's 2 square become 4, 3 square become 9. Okay, so what do we need to know then? Well, let's write down the basics. For now, we just need to know that the intensity is also known as the power at the source, right? spread out over a certain area. Now this area is, uh, if we assume a spherical spreading out, this would be 4 pi r squared, like what we saw just now. But don't worry too much about this, we'll learn more in A2 in the very last chapter. Okay, so this is number one, kind of have a rough idea of intensity. So based on this, you can actually write down the units for intensity, right there at the side. So that's going to be a watts power, per meter square over area. So number one, we need to know this. Now, if we go more into detail about intensity, yeah, actually intensity is measuring the energy of the wave. How much energy does it carry? And in waves, this energy is represented by the amplitude. How big is the oscillation? So this one, we can also write a further derived equation where intensity intensity is proportional to the amplitude square. Otherwise simplify often as intensity proportional to A square. For me, I like to use big A, so I'll use this A square. So in other words, if we were to compare some waves, let's see. Hmm. This wave has a small amplitude, lesser intensity. This wave has a big amplitude, so big intensity. This is a small intensity. Okay, so be careful with the square. There are some questions where you need to move the square around to become a square root. But yes, in conclusion, for wave intensity, make sure you know the general definition, which is power per unit area for a wave. And more specifically, that we'll use more often in calculations, that will be your intensity proportional to amplitude square. Okay, that's all for this section. I'll see you in the next video.